Good evening and welcome to Cabra to the Force Rock Super Series, the Championship, and what should be a fascinating contest between the Wolves and the Bears. Sideways nine years. Sorry, you can't be there. Yeah, was trying to hold his bind there. Now the opportunity to drive through Scott Robson. Alex Tom was in behind him. There's a chance Barreto goes through. And the first points of the game inside the opening 12 minutes. Colin Barreto crosses the try line. It's been a while since he's done so, but that's his sixth try. Robson on the drive. Barreto. Oh, that's great hands. Muirhead with a chance to get away. He's got Cullen on his shoulder. Muirhead goes on the outside. Fullback on fullback. He leaves Bryce on the ground. And that's how to score in style. Ewan Muirhead gets the drive for the Buttermere Bears. What a tournament he's having. His sixth appearance. That's his fifth try. And that's wonderful rugby from a Buttermere Bears perspective. Well, a good advantage can go for it here. Edelson, close to the line, but not close enough. Now it should be the try, and it is. Ryan Southern picked his way through. The Wolves get themselves on the scoreboard. And Ryan Southern had a lot of work to do there. Taken by Larry Knott. This is better play. Well, there's Southern. Going to romp his way through. But here have come through, and it's going to be a card coming out here. The referee was very quick to go to his pocket. You cannot jump over it up. You're off the feet. And they do need to clear out. They did so, Conor Gordon. Penalty. You're on your knees. Three's clearly off his feet, played the ball. And your head looks straight forwards, pops it through. Edelston waits for it. Dan running up very quickly. McGee in again, holding it first receiver. And there's the chance to move through. Ross McKnight, he's a hard man to stop. Six foot five frame, inside it goes. On to Kyle McGee and the explanation point as he pops the ball down. And it is a good start to the second half for the Sterling Wolves. Second try of the match, the first for Kyle McGee. And tries the up and under. These players stay in the right place. That's a great take by Kieran Westlake. Good tackling by Mikey Heron. This is a platform for the Bears. I think advantage will come their way. Labora. A very strong first 15 minutes, then dropped out slightly. Ball in the corner, and they will come back for the penalty advantage. <laughs> like he was going to miss from there. But Amir, though, engaged early. Penalty advantage to come. Hiddleston is driving through. Well, Bottom here are disputing the fact the ball was touched down correctly, but the referee was in the right position. But Southern has got away from him, and there's a lot of space around. Ryan Southern tries to step inside. Here's the opportunity for Davy. Davy lifts it out onto Heron. Callum Ram couldn't make the tackle, it's back inside onto Marcus Holden, rolls it back inside, almost bowled it along the ground. The Bears somehow survive. Davy, Bryce looking for the line, gets the line. But how things can change, Buttermuir were banging on the door, and then the turnover, and how quickly they move to the other end, and it's Glenn Bryce who puts the Wolves ahead for the first time tonight. To get this out quickly, they do so. They are going backwards at the moment. The ball's been kicked through. Here's the opportunity from Cullen, who's trying to keep it alive, but the try is given. And ironically, that will take the bonus point away. It is Ross McKnight 
the man with a touchdown. Marcus Holden ends it on a high for the home team. And the Wolves have downed the Bears. Sterling Wolves, 33. Burmuir's Bears, 20. That's the full time score from Bridgeway. Good afternoon and welcome to match day seven in the Foz Rock Super Series Championship as Watsonians look to get back on track after two losses on the spin. They welcome the Foz Rock Future 15 to my side. And big shove towards the line and they're over. And it only takes them three minutes at Meyer side to break through. Jack Kerr. Davidson plays scrum half. Baggett tries to put it through and it's incredibly snatched by Jack Hawking. Come back for the advantage. 26 points so far this season. Make it 29. Just throws good. Enormous frame of Ryan Burke. Future is pushing and pushing. And Burgess wants everyone in. Coach joins. That's this Douglas. They're inches from the line now. Can they go over? The advantage is coming their way. It's just held up. Looks over the line from here. Must just be short. Now they're not. They go over. It's Freddie Douglas with the try. And the future's hit back. Pringle sees a line. And he pops inside to McAlpine, who goes under the sticks. Watsonians hit back. It's fantastic play. Oh, here's a chance now for the Futures to hit back straight away. It's just gathered, they're held up short. Surely they score in the corner now. Coach finds Kakas out. And it's no surprise who gets the try for the Falls Rock Future 15. Amina Kakasau, five to his name now this season. just about kept in looked like it was heading for the touchline and instead it's heading for the try line the futures go ahead and it's Corey McCormack with it and they do a little move off the top can Van Niekerk stretch for the line yes he can the host sit back almost immediately in the second half. Tries to get that way to Murray Scott, who slips and stumbles, but then gets it to Owsley. And this is where he's so dangerous. The chip bounced on the line, and then Murray Scott touches down. The try is given. Well, Freddie Owsley, so dangerous. And he scored via that left boot a couple of times. Murray Scott. All dealt with by Lewis Ferguson. Just a few inches short now. And they're over. And that might just be the try that seals this game. 
Here comes to Gregor Skugel. Punks it up the line. And the referee blows for full time. Final score, Sonnyans 34, Fosrock Future 24. Final score, Sonnyans 34, Fosrock Future 15, 21. So welcome along to Golden Acre for this match between Heriot's Rugby and the Southern Knights. Heriot's, are they going to be across the line? Real determination shown by Hughes in particular. It's back now with the outside centre and Matt Davidson picking a perfect line to support his midfield partner and the little one-two coming off. Great crossfield kick there. Herrett's now looking to bring George Barber into play. Weaving run here from Barber all the way through. Barber, marvellous score from the right winger. Almost surprised himself at how straightforward that was. So Knights with the throw in. Trailing by 14 points to nil. Goes loose and Knights were able to eventually pick up. There was some uncertainty over who is going to be able to secure possession of the ball. And the Southern Knights have got points on the board before half time. Again, McLaren feeding the ball out towards the left hand side. Now it comes towards Hughes. Hughes then, the measured ball out towards Wells. Wells on that left hand side. The referee raises the arm, and again, it was Hughes involved in the creation of the try. This time, Lewis Wells occupying space on the left-hand side. That's a better execution in the line-out. Alan Ferry positioned himself well. That was a good win. Now the drive from the Knights, a bit more direct. A powerful pack heading towards the line. The raise of the arm from the referee, Rudy Campbell, signalling the score. And the Southern Knights have a second try on the board, and that coming in the early stages of the second half. Bell then just watches on. The Knights number eight with a determined pick and go there, and Gary Young was closed down mightily close to that line. There's a Herrett's interception. The referee though is going to the pocket, and a yellow card has been shown. And it just checking to see if it was indeed Finn Campbell who has been yellow carded. But Herrett's are down to 14 men. Still Herrett's on the defensive as the Knights look to create something perhaps through Alan Ferry. Four metres from the line becomes very quickly a try there for the Southern Knights. And the Southern Knights have made that man advantage count very quickly because they closed in in those final four metres in the blink of an eye. Long throw towards the, the back of the line. And that's a well taken line out. And look at the power of this Herriot's drive on here. This is dangerous. They could well be in with an opportunity to go back in front. And they do indeed. Once again, a perfect example of a line out drive. Five or so metres from the opposition line. And they were over for the score line. Bell has it again, taken on there by Corbin Thunder, the South African literally thundering into the opposition, loop pass out towards the right hand side and he's going to make a break for the line, the referee and the assistant across on the far side have a good long look, Aidan Cross crosses the line for the try, takes the congratulations of his teammates, Southern Knights using the width of the pitch, he stayed in the confines of the pitch, the try is good and the Knights are back to within two points again. And the Knights now looking for a fifth score, which would give them the lead in the game. Crawford as well, out towards this left-hand side. Barrett into the 22. Barrett evades 1-2. Lovely little offload. And on his shoulder is Sam Derrick for his second try of the game. And that's an excellent move involving forwards and backs from the Southern Knights. Interception from the scrummage and away he goes the Southern Knights number nine as he got the gas to finish it off himself. He has indeed what a wonderful score. 
Chris Bell running more than half the length of the field. Powerful piece of running there from Chris Bell. McLaren takes the ball into contact. The pick and go once more now, an opportunity here for Michael Linus. Linus very direct, Herrick's going to respond more or less straight away. Herrick's towards the line, the referee raises the arm. And with a minute of conceding that breakaway score from Chris Bell, it's a response from Herriots, and they've landed five points after quickly conceding five. Feeds the ball on towards Jones, helped along by Linus, who was really critical in that uh, creation of the latest Herriots score. Away to go again down this left-hand side. Some determination and injection of pace was required, and they've been able to find it. Makara in now towards Dan King. King going for the line, King's over the line. The referee raises the arm, King's found a way to respond for Herriots, and they're back in front in the contest. They now lead by 38 points, the 34 scoring in the corner. And the referee takes a look at his watch and blows for full time. A try fest at Golden Acre has ended in a victory for Herriots.